Voila. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am going to be showing you a comparison of surface heat flow interpolations today. Um, my name is Buchanan Kurzweil. I'm currently visiting assistant professor at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and I'm very pleased to be here. So thanks to Gray and for the conveners for running a nice session. I'd like to acknowledge my co-author, Matthew Cohn, funding from the National Science Foundation. And this QR code is a link to a preprint in case anybody's viewing the online version of this article and wants to check that out. In part one, I'll be talking about viscous coupling depth and how surface heat flow suggests that coupling depths are uniform or invariant among subduction zone settings. In part two, I'll talk about upper plate thickness and show some results from some numerical geodynamic models that show a correlation between coupling depth and upper plate thickness. And in part three, I'll talk about geodynamic continuity and how we might infer geodynamic variance from surface heat flow interpolations. So this is a figure from a well-known publication from Ikukawada and Kaylin Wong in 2009, where on the left shows a map of the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America, uh, where the Juan de Fuca plate is converging against the North American plate. If you take a trench perpendicular transect, which is the blue line on the map, and you gather all the surface heat flow data, which are the red data points on the map, within some bounding rectangle around the transect, you will get a surface heat flow profile that looks like the top of panel B on the right. And what Wad and Wang did is they constructed some numerical models that simulate this particular subduction zone setting and they varied coupling depth until the simulated surface heat flow matched well with the observed surface heat flow. And what they found was that for a coupling depth of about 75 kilometers, the simulated surface heat flow fit the observed surface heat flow data well for a dozen or so subduction zone settings. And this result is interesting and surprising because it suggests that coupling depths are approximately invariant among subduction zone settings irrespective of the thermokinematic boundary conditions. A more recent comprehensive study showed a different result. On the right in panel B are the results from 64 fully dynamic numerical models of convergent margins, where we uh, determine coupling depth after 10 million years. You can see coupling depth on the y-axis. It varies wildly from setting to setting, and it does not correlate with the thermal parameter. This result has been noted before by England and others in 2004 and by Wada and Wang themselves in 2009. However, in our simulations, we also varied the upper plate thickness and we found a strong nonlinear correlation between upper plate thickness and coupling depth where coupling depth increases with the square of the upper plate thickness. This result is interesting because it suggests that coupling depths are not invariant from setting to setting. And although coupling depth does not correlate with the thermal parameter, it seems to have a strong response to the thickness of the upper plate lithosphere. So how might we use this information uh, to study subduction geodynamics? Well, if coupling depth is correlated with the upper plate thickness, then in principle, we can estimate coupling depth by calculating upper plate thicknesses using surface heat flow data and one dimensional steady state conductive cooling models. So my research question is, what is the continuous two-dimensional variability of surface heat flow near subduction zones, where we hypothesize that, the that surface heat flow is variable and thus coupling depths are also variable, where the null hypothesis is that surface heat flow is uniform and therefore coupling depths are also uniform or invariant. The data set we use is called Thermoglobe. It's maintained by Derek Kastrock at the University of Adelaide, and today it contains approximately 71,000 data points of variable quality. We uh, use two different interpolation methods. One is called similarity, which is based on the geological context. This is the example in the figure on the right. And the other method is called Krieging, which is based on the spatial context. And so both of the uh, interpolation methods are based on fundamentally different laws of geography. With the Krieging method, we have to uh, assign five different Krieging parameters. And in order to do this in a way that's not just ad hoc 
and also generalizable to different subduction zone settings with variable amounts of surface heat flow data. We uh, wrote an optimization algorithm that computes residuals between the predicted values and the observed values, and then minimizes those residuals um, in a way that uh, sim simultaneously takes into account the interpolation accuracy and the variogram accuracy, which is this step that's necessary for Kriging. We find subtle differences between similarity and Kriging predictions. So on the left is the similarity prediction, which I'll just point out. Uh, if you look at the very northernmost microplate region here in Vanuatu, similarity is making predictions that are relatively high compared to the Kriging predictions which are on the panel B on the right. And so these uh, surface heat flow predictions are useful for um, targeting future surveys because they are indicating regions where spatial context and geological context are in disagreement. We can extract surface heat flow profiles from all these interpolations. And what we find is among all 13 subduction zone segments, there's a whole kaleidoscope of profiles that exist both within and among subduction zones. And what we think this implies is that there's uh, differences or discontinuity in the thickness of the upper plate, which implies that there's discontinuity or vari variance in the coupling depths and or that heat transferring processes are discontinuous or perhaps observational density is simply too low relative to the spatial variability of subsurface thermal structure to refine, um, to resolve finer details. So altogether, the variable surface heat flow profiles among all these segments suggest that subduction geodynamics are discontinuous and variable both within and among subduction zone segments. And this, uh, the information we can extract from this type of analysis is useful for targeting future surveys because it's indicating areas where uh, we're missing something about either the spatial or the geological context. So with that, I will be happy to take a question maybe or two. Thanks. We have some time. There we go. Yep. Hi, Buchanan. Uh, I have two questions. One is, what's the physical process in your model that dictates, that dictates the decoupling depth? And then the other one is about this heat flow. So do you see any systematic kind of a long strike variation in the heat flow, like, for instance, as you go towards a slab edge? Thanks, Adam, for the questions. Uh, the first question, um, serpentine, the serpentine dehydration reaction controls the coupling depth in the models that I showed before. So where we have serpentine in the uh, mantle wedge, we have decoupling, and when the serpentine goes away, um, when you get to high enough temperature, we get coupling. So that's the process that's implemented in the models. The second question about surface heat flow, we do see strange variations along strike. For example, in Sumatra Bonda Sea, you see there's this kind of sinusoidal type of, uh, the top left shows the average, the distribution of surface heat flow as you go from kind of northwest to southeast. And you can see it kind of waves up and down. So I'd be happy to talk to you later about the implications of that. But yeah, certainly we see variations. Thanks. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you.